Praise the Lord Jesus, everyone, and thank you all for staying tuned for our weekly devotional this month. We will close our series with the theme, The Valley of Affliction. There is an age-old question which says, Why do bad things happen to good people? Job is one such character that we would all agree who was a good person, but yet the Lord allowed him to go through a valley of affliction. What is affliction? Affliction is a cause of pain, harm, or a state of being in pain. This matches exactly Job's experience. The Bible mentions Job's character, how he was a righteous man, he had his children and many possessions. Prior to Job's demise, unknown to him was a heavenly conversation. Satan himself presented himself to God, declaring how he went about to and fro in the earth, seeking for a man who he could cause to fear God. Nevertheless, the Lord volunteered Job, saying, There was no one like him. God had all confidence that Job would serve God for naught. Let us pause for a moment. It is a high honor for God to recommend you and to trust you with trouble. Regardless of what you face, you may have to consider that there was a heavenly conversation about you, and God was convinced that no matter what you went through, you would serve Him with your whole heart. While we traverse through this life, we will all have circumstances. The scripture reminds us that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Psalm 39 14. Job also penned that a man born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. That is Job 14 verse 1. Remember you are God's trophy, and in the valley of affliction, he did not mean to drown you, but to build you so that you can come out as pure gold. Job lost all he had, and he heard the news one after the other. First his cattle died, then he learned of all his possessions, then finally his children died. Can you imagine how devastating this was? But God had granted Satan permission to do so. His wife encouraged him, curse God and die, and he desired not to do so. Finally, the enemy afflicted Job's body, and God gave him this permission, saying, you can, take his, you can touch him, but you cannot take his life. This was the last straw, but no matter what, Job did not curse the Lord. He did echo his frustration, but at no point did he curse the Lord from his mouth. It's unfortunate for Job, being surrounded by a discouraging wife, and to make matters worse, he was surrounded by three friends that didn't speak well entirely. Their initial reaction was the best one, which was to keep quiet. But so it was, Job had to endure a discouraging wife, and he also had to endure discouraging friends, friends who did not speak the truth about him. The most pivotal word spoken of by Job was, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though we may go through painful circumstances, it is in God who we must trust to fix it and to give us a wonderful testimony. Job went through periods of frustration and even questioned God. But remember, God answered him strongly in Job 38 verse 4 to 13. He started out by saying, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? The Lord was letting him know that he is bigger than his circumstances, and he is in control. The songwriter says that the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he will make it right. The God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. The scriptures doesn't tell us the tenure of Job's troubles, but we know that God turned his captivity captive when he prayed for his friends. Is there someone you need to pray for? Is there someone you need to forgive? Is this the very last test that the Lord wants to put you through before giving you your victory? What do we learn from Job's life? This is what we learn. It's okay to ask God questions, but at no point should we curse God from our mouth. We should always forgive 
and never bear grudges, even if holding a grudge in our eyes seem legitimate. Finally, we learn endurance. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Though I am in the valley of affliction, I will declare with my mouth that it is well, and that God loves me and he cares about me. Endurance builds my faith, and at the end of the day I will have a testimony, so that someone going through the same situation can be encouraged. Your test is only for God's glory, and when you are going through your test, remember that lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the earth. The scripture says, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. The scripture also reminds us that he who endures to the end, the same shall be saved, and he will God give a crown of life. The Bible also reminds us that I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's not over until it's over, and the Lord will surely bring it's not over until it's over and God will certainly bring you through. God gave him double for his trouble. God restored his children, his possessions, and everything that he lost. So I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, the God who allowed you to be in the fire will surely take you out. The valley of affliction is not forever, but rather it is a place to learn and grow. Once you have passed your test, you will see what the Lord has in store for you. God bless you and keep on walking with him in Jesus name Heavenly Father Lord I place myself and my brothers and my sisters before you Lord Jesus Christ though the circumstances may be hard and painful Lord God Almighty we give you thanks for your word says that in everything give thanks but this is the will of God concerning you Lord Jesus Christ we thank you God that you are building our spiritual muscles Lord God Almighty, you are building our muscles of faith and endurance through the circumstances, God, that you have allowed to be in our lives. God, I pray that you will help us, Father, to pass each and every test, tests of forgiveness, tests of endurance, and tests of faith, mighty God. Lord Jesus, help us to bridle our tongue and speak not evil, O God, hallelujah, when we should speak good. Help us, God, to bless and not curse. Help us, O oh God, to keep a sweet spirit while we are going through a rough circumstance. Help us, God, to use this circumstance to give you the glory with our lives and how we respond, O oh God, to situations that are unsavory. God, I pray that you will keep us in your perfect will and in your perfect hands and that one day, God, you will give us the testimony that we so desire. And while we wait on you, Lord, we will give you the glory because you are our God. And no matter what happens in our lives, you are still faithful. So, Lord God, we glorify you and we give you the praise and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen.